بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفر إنه كان توابا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ When the victory of Allah has come and the conquest. وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسَ يَدَخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجًا And you see the people entering into the religion of Allah in multitudes. فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ تَوَّابًا Then exalt him with praise of your Lord and ask forgiveness of him. Indeed. He is ever accepting of repentance. Time for the story. The Prophet and his followers settled in Medina. The Muslims who came with the Prophet were called the Muhajir. It means the immigrants. They were called the immigrants because they migrated from Mecca. The Muslims who were the natives of Medina were called the Ansar. The Ansar means the helpers. The immigrants came to Medina from Mecca. They had no houses in Medina, and they brought only the most necessary things with them. But the helpers were natives of Medina. They had houses there. They had fields and orchards. The Prophet told the Muslims, the immigrants and the helpers are brothers. All the Muslims belong to one family. They must help each other. They must look after each other. And the helpers put up the immigrants in their own houses. They gave them food. They shared with them whatever they had. In Medina, there also lived a large number of Jews. The Prophet said, the Jews are the people of the book, and he made a friendly agreement with them. The agreement was written down. This is what it said. In the name of Allah, the compassionate, the merciful, this is an agreement with Muhammad, the Prophet. It is an agreement between all communities of Medina. It is an agreement between both Muslims and non-Muslims. The Jews have their religion and the Muslims have theirs. The Muslims will respect the rights of the Jews. They will protect them and the Jews will be loyal to the Muslims and fight by their side. In this way, all those who stay in Medina will be one community. Medina shall be a sanctuary for the people of this document. If there is any misunderstanding, the final judges shall be the Prophet and Allah. But this document will protect only just and honest people. It will not protect unjust people and sinners. Allah is a protector of the good. Allah is a protector of the God-fearing. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of Allah. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the prophet of Allah, was the leader of Medina. All the people of Medina were guaranteed their rights and they knew their duties. Both Muslims and non-Muslims were told how to live together. They were told how to live in peace. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, once left for Mecca to perform Umrah, accompanied by 1400 companions. He camped at Hudaybiyah, a short way from Mecca. It was a completely peaceful march, but the Meccan leaders objected to it. They felt that their prestige was damaged by the fact that the very people who had been expelled by them from Mecca should come to the city again and perform the rites of Umrah openly and in such large numbers. Now, the Prophet halted at Hudaybiyah and began negotiating for peace with the Meccan leaders. The Quraysh finally agreed to sign a peace treaty, specifying that for the next 10 years, no war would take place between the Muslims and the Meccans. By the terms of this treaty, the Muslims were to go back without visiting the Kaaba. They were to come again the following year and stay in Mecca for just three days. The companions of the Prophet were very upset at the terms of the treaty. It seemed to them that the Meccans had been dominant and they were made out to be subservient. But God declared in the Quran that it was a clear victory for the believers. The future events showed how the Treaty of Hudaybiyah paved the way for the spread of Islam across Arabia. It was exactly eight years since the Muslims had left Mecca. During this time, the Muslims had grown very strong. The peace treaty that had been signed with the pagans of Mecca and the Jews who had been scheming against the Muslims were disarmed. The leaders of the world were informed about Islam. Many people had come from far away places and entered this new religion. 
and the strong army of the Byzantines had been pushed back. The prophet and his companions were very happy with all of these events, but still there was some sadness in their hearts because they were still prohibited from being near to the Kaaba. It was the one thing they loved the most in the world. The Kaaba was the most beautiful place in the world to be. From the time of the first man, its sacredness had been valued, but now it was in the hands of the Meccan pagans. They had filled the inside and surroundings of the Kaaba with every kind of idol. They were not worshiping Allah, the owner of the Kaaba, but the idols in front of the Kaaba, they were even behaving indecently. The prophet was very much disturbed by these things. The Kaaba deserved the worship of Allah by clean, righteous people. It was necessary to clean the sacred place of all such ugliness. The prophet was looking for a way to do this, but it was not at all easy. The pagans were not allowing anyone else to approach the Kaaba. The Muslims could reach the Kaaba only if they conquered Mecca. Then it could be cleared of all the idols and it could be open to the Muslims for worship. Now, the Muslims were strong enough to do this. The Muslim army had grown very strong, but the Prophet did not want to break the peace treaty that he had signed with the pagans of Mecca. While the Muslims carefully observed the terms of the agreement to keep the peace, some pagans one day attacked some of the friends of the Prophet. Although they had promised at Hudaybiyah that for the next 10 years they were not going to harm anyone, they had shed blood and with this ugly behavior of theirs, had broken the peace treaty. When the prophet heard of this, he was saddened. Immediately, he sent word to the pagans and informed them of the consequences. You have broken the peace treaty of Hudaybiyah. If you continue in these wicked ways, we are going to be forced to fight, to fight against you. When the pagans got this news, they were fearful. Most of them knew that the prophet was right, but the leaders of Mecca continued in their stubbornness and said they were ready to fight. The prophet then took a decision. Yes, he was going to go to Mecca. It was a time to teach the Meccan pagans a lesson. He sent for all his companions to immediately make preparations to leave. But the prophet of Allah kept the destination a great secret because he did not want to shed blood. He wanted to catch the idol worshippers unaware. He did not want to give them the time to prepare for such a battle. He was praying. Oh my Lord, until the moment I reach there, prevent all the couriers and spies from being able to see and hear what we are doing and what we are saying. Let them hear me and let them see me all of a sudden in front of Mecca. In a very short time, a 10,000 strong army was equipped and ready to march. All preparations were done in secret. Muslims near and far ran to join the Prophet and his army. Who knew? Maybe the Kaaba was very soon going to see better days. 10,000 men, the Prophet set out. They were finally headed for Mecca. It was very hot, but neither temperature nor fatigue affected them. The companions advanced with complete joy and took beard on their lips. Allahu Akbar! Allahu Akbar! Suddenly, something caught the eye of the Prophet. At the exact place where the army was supposed to pass, a mother dog was feeding her puppies. They were so hungrily nursing that they were unaware of the great army approaching them. Noticing this, the Prophet took precautions right away. He immediately called one of his companions and ordered him to protect this dog and her puppies. The companion raised in the head of the army to the dog. In so to as to disturb the puppies, he changed the route of the army. After the army had gone, he mounted his horse again and hurried to take his place among the marching soldiers. So through the compassion of the Prophet, the lives of the pups and the mother dog were saved. People were waiting with flags and banners of all colors. The Muslim army with firm and great determination was advancing towards Mecca. The purpose of the prophet was without shedding any blood or harming anyone to clear the Kaaba of all ugliness. The sun was almost setting. There was little time left for them, but they were very close now. Very soon they would enter the city and the pagans of Mecca knew nothing of this. The pagans were furious with the conquest of Mecca. They were burning with hatred because they couldn't resist the Muslim army. There were those who wanted to take their revenge on the prophet. They looked for every opportunity to kill him. One of them was a pagan by the name of Fadala. While the prophet was circling the Kaaba, Fadala kept carefully observing him. Wicked thoughts were boiling in his brain. As soon as the opportunity arose, he was going to get him. Now, the moment he had been waiting for had arrived. 
the prophet was passing in front of Fadala. There and then, Fadala was going to attack him. But the prophet turned to him and smiled. In a warm, sincere tone of voice, he said, Are you Fadala? Fadala answered in amazement, Yes, O Messenger of Allah. He said, At this moment, what are you thinking of? He answered, Hmm, well, I'm not thinking of anything. Of course he was lying. I'm busy remembering and mentioning the name of Allah. Allah the Most High had whoever informed his prophet about the thoughts of Fadila. Fadila committed two mistakes. First, he wanted to kill the prophet. And second, he lied. But the prophet was forgiving. He looked at him lovingly and said, Fadila, you have to seek forgiveness from Allah. Then he approached him and putting his hands on his chest, he prayed for him. Fadila realized that the Prophet had been informed about his bad intention and this had a great impact on him. The Messenger of Allah had not punished him for the wicked acts he had been planning and furthermore he had prayed for his well-being. When the Prophet took his hands off Fadila's chest he was cleared of all those bad thoughts. Raising his head he looked at the Prophet's face adoringly. As the Messenger of Allah was walking away Fadila told those around him, I swear to God that at this moment, nobody could be more dearer to me than him. No one can be more beloved than him. And no one can be more beautiful than him. The most precious place in the world was the Kaaba. For the believers, the Kaaba was the Qibla, the direction in which to face when praying to Allah. Allah the Most High had ordered his servants to turn towards it five times a day. Those who had the means had to go there and visit at least once in a lifetime. That is, he or she had to perform the Hajj, the pilgrimage to the Kaaba. The prayer said of the Kaaba would never be rejected. All the prophets had prayed there. Before the prophet came to this world, his grandparents had always protected the Kaaba. The prophet was born in the city where it was located and he was raised with the love of the Kaaba. While he was separated from it, he had missed it very much. When he reached it, he was incredibly happy. The Kaaba was the most precious diamond of the world. However, this beautiful diamond was filthy in the hands of the pagans. The pagans had surrounded the sacred building with every kind of idol. Around the Kaaba, there were exactly 360 idols. The Prophet was very disturbed by this. The idols didn't suit the beautiful Kaaba at all. The Prophet approached their lifeless and senseless idols with a staff in his hand. With it, he pointed to each idol in turn and recited verses from the Quran. The truth has come and the falsehood has vanished. Indeed, every falsehood is going to vanish. With this, the idols, one by one, or two at a time, began to fall down. There was something that captured the attention of those who were witnessing this. When the prophet pointed to the face of an idol, it fell down on its face, and if he pointed towards the back of an idol, it fell backwards. For years, these idols had not been moved from their places. They were anchored with very firmly to the ground, but now, with just one indication from the Prophet, they were falling down, subhanAllah. Indeed, without doubt, this was a miracle. Within a short period of time, all of the 360 idols were destroyed and became like sand on the ground. Thereafter, the Prophet destroyed each one of the idols inside the Kaaba. In this way, the Kaaba was cleared of all the idols. The most precious building in the world, the Kaaba, was like a black diamond reflecting light all around it. She had reached those she loved, and those who loved her had reached her. There was joy in every heart. <clears throat> Eyes were shiny and tongues were busy with good news. After the conquest of Mecca, the, cleans the cleansing of the Kaaba of idols had made all the Muslims very happy. It was a time for the noon prayer. The Prophet ordered Bilal to call all the believers to the prayer. Bilal was so happy, he didn't know how to react. In great excitement, he climbed to the roof of the Kaaba. With his beautiful voice, he called the Adhan. He wanted that happy moment never to end. As he thought of the past, he was thanking Allah. Once in a bygone time, just because he had said, Allah is the one. They had placed a rope around his neck and dragged him through the streets of Mecca. Every kind of torture never imagined before was meted out to him. But now, confidently and without fear, he was giving the Adhan and the pagans were not able to do anything to him. After having consolidated the power of Islam in Arabia, the Prophet set out to perform Hajjatul Wada, his farewell pilgrimage. It was the last year of his life. He left Medina for Mecca, accompanied by Medinian Muslims. When the news spread that the Prophet was going to perform the pilgrimage, various tribes living in Arabia began pouring into Mecca. 
Therefore, when the Prophet of Islam performed his first as well as his last pilgrimage, he was joined by nearly 125,000 Muslims. During this pilgrimage, the revelations about the rules of the Hajj were given to him. These are followed by all Muslims to this day. When the Prophet arrived at Mount Arafat, he imparted some teachings to the people present on that occasion. These are preserved in the form of the final sermon. During the sermon of Arafat, the last patch of the Quran was revealed. Today I have completed your religion for you and completed my blessings upon you. I have chosen for you Islam as your religion. This proved to be his last visit. That is why it came to be called the farewell pilgrimage. Now, that was the end of today's story. As usual, we're going to have a little quiz time to see who's understood the story and who's really been paying attention. I'm pretty sure you're all familiar with the instructions. So I'm going to repeat the question three times. If you know the answer, raise your hand by clicking the three dots at the bottom of your screen. Do not unmute yourself, wait to be unmuted. Okay, let's start. Question one, what is the name of the story we have been learning about today? What is the name of the story we have been learning about today? What is the name of the story we have been learning about today? Does anyone know the answer to the first question? What is the name of the story we're learning about today? Anyone know the answer? Remember, just click the three dots at the bottom to raise your hand. Okay, I see your hand. Abu Bakr, I'm going to unmute you. The story of Prophet Muhammad. The Prophet Muhammad. Um, do you know the, the name of what we're talking about today? No. No? Okay, that's fine. Anyone else know? I'll give you a clue. The title uh, mentions Mecca. So there's two words before Mecca. Anyone know the answer to this question? Wow. No one knows the answer? Okay, I'm going to reveal the, the answer. The answer is conquest of Mecca, okay? Next question. What was the name of the prophet's followers? Now I mentioned this at the beginning of the story, so it, it might be a bit tricky to remember, but if anyone can tell me what was the name of the prophet's followers? Anyone know? You can try guess. What was the name of the prophet's followers? Yeah, what are the Rashid? The Sahabas. Do you know the, the word of um, that we used in the beginning? No. That's fine. Let's try Abu Bakr. Do you know the answer? The Quraysh. No, that's not the answer, I'm afraid. Someone asked how many questions. There's going to be 10 questions today. Okay. Anyone know the answer to this question? What was the name of the prophet's followers at the beginning of the story? Okay, the answer is, they were called the Muhajiriya. The Muhajir, that's the name of the prophet's followers at the beginning of the story. Okay, question three. What does Muhajir mean? Is it A, the immigrants, or B, the helpers? What does Muhajir mean? Is it A, the immigrants, or B, the helpers? Hana Sidran Khadija, let me meet you now. Is it A? Let's see if that's the correct answer. Yes, mashallah, well done, that's the correct answer. Thank you for answering. Okay, next question. Question four. How many years did the Prophet ﷺ have to stay away from Mecca? Was it A, seven years, B, five years, or C, ten years? How many years did the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ have to stay away from Mecca? Was it A, seven years, 
B, five years, or C, 10 years. Mario Manamena, I'm going to unmute you. 10 years. 10 years, so that's the right answer. Mashallah, well done. That's the correct answer. Okay. Next question. Question five. What was the name of the farewell pilgrimage? What was the name of the farewell pilgrimage? What was the name of the farewell pilgrimage? This is a bit tricky. Does anyone know what the name of the farewell pilgrimage was called? Does anyone know? I'll give away the first part. The first part is called Hajjatul. Does anyone know what the last word was? Abu Bakr, I'm going to unmute you. Kaaba. No, not the right answer. Sorry. Um, what are the Rashid? Hajjatul Wida. So that's the right answer. It was called Hajjatul Wida. Well done. Next question. Question six. What was the name of the natives of Medina? What was the name of the natives of Medina? If you start, I'll give you a clue. It begins with A. The word begins with the letter A. What was the name of the natives of Medina? Does anyone know the answer to this question? What was the name of the natives of Medina? Rhoda, I'm going to unmute you. Answer. Let's see what's the right answer. They were called the Ansar. Mashallah. Well done. Thank you for answering. Question number seven. Does anyone know what does Ansar mean? Does anyone know what does Ansar mean? If you're confused, at the beginning of the quiz, I mentioned it with the other um, option. So when I asked you all, what does, um, what does Muharraj mean? Yeah, Hannah Sidi Khadija. Is it the followers? No, you're, you're almost there. Abu Bakr? Um, the, the, help, the helpers. Mashallah, that's the right answer. It means the helpers. Question eight. How many men were in the Prophet's army? Was it A, 100, B, 1,000, or C, 10,000? How many men we're in the Prophet's army. Is it A, 100, B, 1,000, or C, 10,000? What are the Rashid? I'm going to unmute you. 1,000. 1,000. That's not the correct answer. Does anyone else know? Rhoda? 1 million. 10,000. 10,000. MashaAllah, well done. Thank you for answering. The answer is 10,000, okay? Now, last question. What was the name of the first Martin? What was the name of the first Martin? If you don't know what that means, um, it was the, the first person who called the prayer. So what was the name of the person who called the prayer? What are the Rashid? I'm gonna meet you. Bilal. Let's see if that's the right answer. Mashallah, well done. His name was Bilal. Okay, thank you all very much for answering the questions. We have reached the end of Stories of the Quran. I hope you all enjoyed these sessions and learned from them. Jazakallah. Khair.